Hey everyone, it's time for our next uh, Jesus in Your Living Room devotional. And today uh, I'm not in my living room. I'm actually just here in uh, my office at the uh, at the church, uh, where it's pretty uh, pretty quiet. Uh, but outside, it's a beautiful day. So hope you guys are gonna be able to enjoy some nice uh, outdoor time today. Uh, we're gonna keep going with uh, with our devotional stuff. And last time. We were anchored in 1 Peter chapter 1, where we talked about uh, some of the similarities with uh, the people Peter was writing to, people who were scattered because of persecution. And even though that's not necessarily our case here, um, the point is that they weren't able to be together as uh, as a church in all of their areas uh, because of the persecution that was going on. And, uh, and their lives were kind of in a state of upheaval and uncertainty, as things uh, definitely are here in our culture and in our world today. And uh, we talked a little bit about, about um, being anchored in a heavenly hope that Peter says that we were saved into a hope that can never perish, spoil, or fade, that it's eternal. And that helps us to stay anchored, even though some of the circumstances uh, around us uh, are difficult and beyond our control. So today I want to keep going with uh, with a couple of more thoughts and uh, and read the next couple of verses in 1 Peter chapter 1. I want to read verses 6 and 7, and uh, we're going to dig into some good stuff together. So Peter says, In all this you greatly rejoice, referring to the, the hope that we've been called into in Christ. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. And uh, I love what Peter has to say simply because even though he calls us to have a heavenly perspective and to keep our hope anchored in eternity, that even though things in this life become difficult, there's a hope ahead of us that can't be touched, that can't be altered, that can't be spoiled, uh, that can't be modified or changed or taken away from just because of circumstances, which is uh, which is a really comforting idea. Uh, he says that even, even though this is true, there's still a way that we can have joy in the middle of our trials today, that we don't simply look ahead to when things are going to be better, but in, in the moment right now, there's still joy to be experienced. And, uh, and what he's saying is, is that these these sufferings, whatever those sufferings look like, uh, the sufferings of uh, of a collapsed economy uh, in these days, uh, the suffering of not being able to gather with friends, uh, all of the things that are a part of uh, what's happening today, he said these things have come, these trials, these sufferings have come, in order to test our faith. Now I don't want to open up a great big box about about suffering and why suffering happens in other parts of the world and this part of the world and who caused it and is God responsible for it. I think there's some really good answers to that question, but it's not really the question that we want to explore here. I think the main point is that if God is sovereign, he is in control and there are things that he does allow and there's uh, initially a sense of mystery or wondering why these things do end up happening. And Peter gives us at least a partial answer when he says these things have come and they're being used by God to help shape and grow our faith. And, and he uses the picture of gold. He says your faith, even though it's of greater value than gold, um, we can compare it to gold because uh, the way gold is purified is through heat. So you melt gold, and the hotter the gold is, the more all the impurities rise to the surface because of the heat, and it's called slag, and they simply scrape the slag off the top of this, uh, of this molten uh, gold in order for it to become more and more pure. And what Peter is saying is that the opportunity of trials is to have our faith grow and become purified. And one of the greatest ways we do that is simply keeping our eyes on Jesus. Uh, it's simply understanding that, that the, the current suffering, the current grief, the current trial that we may be going through uh, is not the end of the story. That it doesn't get to define who we are. Um, that there's even purpose in the middle of it. There's a redemptive plan at play that God is working out um, and the only way that I know of to make sure that that redemptive process happens uh, is to keep our eyes on Jesus. That as we pray, we ask difficult questions like, Jesus, 
what do you want to do in my heart? How do you want to refine my faith in the middle of this current situation, in the middle of upheaval? How do you want to shape and mold my faith? Because Peter's making the point that our faith is of greater value than anything else. He says it's of far greater value than even gold. Now think about that even in terms of our current context. Uh, you know, people's retirement income is threatened because of a stock market that's gone down. People's daily wi- uh, living uh, wage and, and job security have been directly threatened uh, by the whole COVID crisis. And Peter's saying our faith is of greater value than our retirement savings. It's greater than our current paycheck. It's greater than the idea of um, a booming economy. Uh, it's greater even than this, the daily security of having food in the cupboard and, and, uh, and, and milk in the fridge. Um, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty heavy point to take in. It's a pretty uh, serious idea to think about our faith as having more value than, than those physical things that we rely on each day. So, so maybe in this, in this season, there's an opportunity for us to pause. And if we feel restlessness and agitation, if we feel the frustration, the concern, if we feel the, the anxious feelings of uncertainty about how everything is going to pan out, uh, what are things going to look like six months from now? It's a great opportunity to pause and to ask Jesus, what part of my faith, what part of my relationship with you are you wanting to refine? Because if those things become the bulk of our thought and and we give the majority of our spiritual and emotional energy into thinking about those things, then we're thinking about something that actually has less value than our faith. And that's you know that's not a um, that's not a condemning word. It's just simply a word of focus. That if we're focusing on those things, that um, that Jesus can help us redirect our focus. Um, over and over again in Scripture, God reveals himself as a provider. Uh, the provider of food, the provider of protection and safety, the provider of, of victory when, uh, when enemies are closing in. And, uh, and God is gracious to look after us. And in the middle of these days, it's a great chance for our faith to grow. As we keep our eyes on him, as we remember the hope he's called us into, and, uh, and as we allow him to refine our faith, what are, what are the elements of impurities that he's raising to the surface that he wants to just eliminate and scrape off the top so that the final product uh, is even more pure? So let me pray for you guys. Thanks for tuning in and uh, keep tuning in for more uh, devotional updates and any other updates that we want to send out to you. So let me pray for you at this time. Jesus, I ask that you would meet your people in a special and powerful way today. Uh, As we've already walked through a a number of weeks uh, into this whole pandemic situation, uh, Lord, some of the initial ability to to hold on and to be patient and to see where this goes um, may now actually be turning into frustration and may be turning into a greater level of uncertainty. Uh, as more jobs are lost and as there's more, uh, maybe even a greater or increasing sense of chaos out there. So Jesus, I pray that you will help us. Uh, Help us to slow down our hearts and our minds. Uh, Give us courage and strength to spend uh, diligent time in your presence. Simply listening to your voice and allowing you to highlight for us the areas of our faith that you want to grow. Uh, that you want to purify and refine like gold. Thank you, Jesus, that you help us to stay centered on you, that when we focus on you, that all those cares and worries, they can fall to the side, that we can hold in your presence the joy of knowing that you walk with us, that you will never leave us or forsake us, that you will provide for us, that you will guide us, that you will literally guide our steps in front of us. So thank you for that, Jesus. I pray for your people to experience your peace and your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time.